on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. They try to force their print ideas onto the ebook land, and sometimes that works, but sometimes it just doesn't. For us, both of these things are sort of first class citizens in our app. Whenever we write a feature, we think, how's it going to look in ebook and how's it going to look in print? Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers, no more barriers, no one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self publishing success. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to The Self-Publishing Show with me, James Blatch. And me, Mark Dawson. Uh, We're here this week to talk about a beautifully aesthetic bit of software in the uh, publishing world, self-publishing world, but I guess it's used in publishing as well. And we're going to speak to one of the stars. It's our proper fanboy interview today coming up uh, for me because I'm a big fan of these guys and what they've done. That is our interview. Before then, Mark, a couple of things to mention. Um... We have a blog available on our site, released every Friday, a new blog, bit of insight to help you in your marketing. And it's about the algorithm, the old algo, algorithm marketing for authors. All about kickstarting the algorithm, Mark, still a thing. A lot of stuff gets spoken about algorithms. All sorts of people claim to know all sorts of things. But in reality, we know that any organization, whether it's TikTok promoting posts, Facebook promoting posts, Amazon promoting books, light success. And our job, I think, is to kickstart the success and then get the algorithm to say, okay, this is making money. I'm going to give it a bit of a further push. Is that a good summation? Yeah, it's used, I think generally it's common sense, but I think what's the, what do the, what does the platform want to achieve? So looking at Amazon, Amazon wants to sell things and make money. So anything that it's, it, it can see is, is is generating sales is going to be something that gets pushed to sell more things of more of those sales so yeah it's, it's i mean we, we we can speculate as to what uh, the algorithm contains but it is just speculation um you know i i know plenty of people at amazon and i don't think any of them would would suggest that they know exactly how the algorithm works and that would be the same for you know most places but we can start with some uh, general a general position fairly broad strokes and then um you know kind of speculate from there yeah, so that blog is available on the website. I should also say that we're going to be in uh, Florida. Uh, is it next week? The time this is going out? This is going out a week on... F- no, it's going out this Friday. Mm. Which is what date? The... It's going out the 9th. The so 9th. we're going to week after next. Week after next, we're going to be flying out to Florida. I think it's something like the 19th, Monday the 19th, we arrive. Yes. Uh, at St. Pete Beach, uh, near St. Petersburg, in uh as i say near tampa uh, in florida and we will be hosting drinks uh you don't have to be attending the conference to come to our drinks at the shark tooth tavern which is a little pub uh, or bar on the uh on the premises there on the estate of the trade winds resort um and that is going to be on friday the 23rd from 9 p.m i guess people will be there a bit earlier than now we're saying 9 p.m they've asked us to do that so we're not conflicting with some of the nighttime sessions that they're running and it's a nighttime kind of place, is it not? The Nink, I mean, that's stuff happens at night. Uh, is it a nighttime place? I think the beach is quite nice in the daytime. Um, you know. It is. But the tiki bar and all that oh, area yeah. is kind of, kind of that's yeah. a, a signature of, of Nink. And they're very, I have to say, a very energetic bunch, uh, the ones who run Nink. We get emails from them a lot. They're very well organized. Um, they've got lots of people on board helping them out. We're very happy to be sponsors this year. Uh, we're going to be running a dinner. Uh, I'll be speaking in a session on TikTok. And generally, we'll be there to press the flesh, won't we, Mark? People want to come and say hello to us. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, there's here a door knock. Was that your door, James? No, that's me drumming my fingers. Oh, um, <laughs> very professional. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's a good it's a good session. So I didn't, didn't go last year, did we, or the year before um, because of COVID? But, no. Um, yeah, it'd be good to good to get back to Florida and, and see some uh, see some old friends. Looking forward to it. Yeah, good. And uh, there's going to be some news coming up in the next couple of weeks about the self publishing show live in June 2023. 
Um, so we're going to announce the, the finer details and how you can get hold of tickets at a good early bird price. So that's to come in the next couple of weeks. So just uh, keep listening for that. Um, also, I just want to say thank you to everyone who sponsored me. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit stiff. It has to be said, I ran my first organised half marathon on Sunday, which turned out to be not very well researched. We were running at Silverstone Circuit, which obviously is going to be this you know, Formula One circuit, flat, predictable surface. That got cancelled. One of my friends found this local one in North Stowe, it's about 10 miles away. Fine, we'll do that. It's on the next, you know, the next day. So we did that. It turns out 75% of this was footpaths around fields and across yeah. fields. And it was a very small crowd. There were 70 people running. And they were all like running groups who wanted the challenge of doing a really hard, hard tough course. So it probably wasn't the right one for me to choose. As I turned out, as it turned out, halfway through, I was thinking, this is really hard work. Um, if you don't run, you probably won't necessarily appreciate that the energy you put in on tarmac gives you one speed. The energy you put in on a rough path gives you much slower speed, and it just it just feels like harder work. But um, So I didn't get a personal best. I did it in 2.14, if anyone's interested. I was trying to break, break 2.10. But... That's pretty good. Yeah, I'll yeah I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with it. Um, I came 50th out of 70-something. Not bad. At least finishing is an achievement in itself. So that's uh, yeah, really good. I'm uh, uh, back in the back of the fitness go, fitness go as well. I had a week off when I was away in Southwold last week. Heavy rain at the moment, and um, yes, I got back on the peloton last night. Absolutely love it. I absolutely love peloton. I am I am a massive fan of it now. Um, that's great. Yeah, so I prefer the bike, but got the treadmill as well, and and that's also excellent. But just kind of. I found an instructor who has very, very similar taste to me, re- weirdly similar, um, and it's just really fun to, you know, she picks a track for Bauhaus and from, you know '80s goth music. It's just hilarious to to, to work out to it. Um, so yeah, if anyone has, if anyone wants to kind of work out with me, I am P back writer on Peloton, so you can follow me um, and or follow each other, and then we can kind of as I say, get get sweaty together. But um, hmm. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, quite an invite. It's, it's very fun. I love it. Um, yeah, that's good. And obviously, you know, keeping mobile and, and healthy and um, at you know, our age, mar- it all, all helps. Yeah, uh, I am. As I say, I'm feeling it today. I was all right yesterday. I went for a long walk on the beach yesterday with the dogs. So it was all fine. But today, I've woken up thinking, oh my god, feeling my age a bit. Um, Anyway, I was basically saying thank you to those people who sponsored me. And I had a couple of anonymous donations of, of a decent size in US dollars, I guess, from people listening to the show. Um, and that's really, really kind of you. It's a, it's a cause very close to my heart, Pancreatic Cancer UK. Uh, and the work done in the UK benefits everyone. I mean, they all work together, these charities around the world. So and I've been reading this morning, actually, about some of the work there, areas they're working on. Tough, It's a tough cancer uh, to try and solve. Okay, right. Um, I think that's probably it for now, Mark. We've got uh, a few things bubbling on in the background, a lot going on in SPF worlds. We will slowly reveal over coming weeks. Uh, But for now, we have our star interview. Um, So this is Brad Andelman, who is one of the two Brads, coincidentally two Brads, uh, who run Vellum. They uh, created it. They run the software. They don't employ anyone. They still do it themselves. It's a really interesting interview. If you're slightly geeky about how organizations work and how software is created, it's actually quite a good interview for you as well, because I'm a little bit like that. And I was asking him about the updating and so on. Um, They have a background from Pixar. The animation company, of course, brought us Toy Story and um, and everything else, some cars and you name it, uh, before being subsumed into Z- Disney. And you can tell that they are an aesthetically pleasing um, background because that's what they brought to Vellum. Uh, so let's hear from Brad and then Mark and I will be back for a chat. This is the self-publishing show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Okay, Brad Andelman, welcome uh, to the self-publishing show. Now, I know I spoke to one of you before was that you brad or was it your colleague i think it was it was yeah it gets confusing uh, i think it was my colleague brad west okay so, so first time onto the show and uh but we have met we met at nink a couple of years ago and i was um i saw you standing there and i was quite starstruck and the reason i was starstruck is because <laughs> vellum is is for me is like a celebrity piece of the uh indie <laughs> um uh, ecosystem it's just a, a a beautiful beautifully put together bit of software it's a software it's not very often you hear anyone saying that they look forward to doing a task like formatting but honestly 
vellum and if you're not into vellum you probably think everyone else is a vellum bore who, who likes vellum but that's why we evangelize it because it's just a, a delightful bit of software to use so first of all thank you for creating it uh, thank you for saying that i mean uh, we love to hear that because you know we um you know we obviously want to make things easy for authors but it's also really nice to um to hear that appreciation for sort of the craft of making software too. It's something that Brad and I spend a lot of time thinking about how to make it easy, and, but also beautiful at the same time. So it's, thank you for saying that. Hey, it's no, nice you're, you're welcome. And you know, so I love Scrivener. I love lots of other bits and pieces, but you don't use words like beautiful about many pieces of software. I suppose the only other most famous organization brand that does this is Apple. And I, I think Apple must have been in some way an inspiration to you, the way that they do approach things from an aesthetic point of view as well as a functional point of view. Ab absolutely. I mean, it's it's one of the reasons why we're currently um, Mac only is that we really like their aesthetic. We like the way they approach things. There's a lot of benefits to um, to existing in that that um, Mac ecosystem as well. And and since that we're currently Mac only. Um, we wanted to make it feel like it was very much a part. It was, you know, of, of that, like I said, the Mac ecosystem, we wanted to make sure it didn't feel like you were using something else that it integrated well with all the other things that you're used to using on the Mac. And, um, and, um, Brad and I, we, uh, we worked um, at Pixar for a long time working in on the software there. And, uh, and as a result, we had quite a bit of collaboration with Apple people as well, because Pixar and Apple have had sort of a, a tight relationship at the time when Steve Jobs was involved. So I think we have that sort of in our blood in a, in a way, you know, we, we want to make it look beautiful and we want to make it, um, yeah, feel, um, feel at home on the Mac. Yeah, and that certainly is is how it feels. Uh, we should address the Mac question straight away because it is the one thing, of course, half the audience say is that yeah. I can't use it because I'm a PC user. Macs are expensive. Uh, so first of all, are there any plans at any point to have a PC version? Um, we always say that we don't, we don't have, what we said in the past is we don't have active plans for a PC version. And that remains, that is true today. Um, and, uh, you know, there, we, there are many reasons for that. Um, one is that we, you know, we started and, um, and now we have, you know, like you said, a big fan base, we have a lot of users who, and, um, who expect that, uh, you know, uh, who we want to make happy. And we've, been, we've been adding stuff to Vellum, you know, uh, constantly, um, from, from our beginnings, almost 10 years ago, we've been just improving and improving it. And there's only two of us. So you talk to, that's it. There's, there's me and there's Brad West. And so, um, short of getting much bigger as a company, which is a thing we could consider. Um, we really like the fact that we can just the two of us deliver a great, great product, um, that fits in seamlessly to most many people's workflows. Um, and we have heard from a lot of people who use Mac and cloud. It's not what we would consider the ideal way to use Vellum. Cause like you said, you want it to sort of fit in to the rest, you know, the rest of the stuff that you do on your computer. Um, but we wrote a guide for it and people, people really like it because, um, you know, yeah, if you, if you don't have a, have a Mac, you know, that's probably the best way to use Vellum. And it's, and we tried to make using Vellum like fun and also fast that you don't need to spend hours learning it. Um, and so we do think that it's possibly an economic way for people who don't want to purchase a Mac. That said, this sort of Macs are expensive thing. Like, um, uh, I hear that a lot. You know, these new computers, I think, bang for the buck are incredible with the, the M1 and M2 chips. Um, they're really they're super fast they're and bang for the buck i think they're they're a fantastic fantastic deal yeah it's a while since i've looked at the whole range of macs now but they used to do the mac mini which i had for years before i had a um you know a laptop or an, an iMac mm -hmm. and the mac mini was literally this about that this big but it was the whole yeah. it was the whole computer and you, all you needed to do was plug in the keyboard and monitor and so i guess they still do an equivalent of that mm -hmm. yeah they still have the mac mini um and yeah, that's actually really reasonable a price too. Yeah. And let's, I want to backtrack slightly just on this subject. I'm not going to dwell 
a, a, a whole interview on the PC versus Mac. But yeah. uh, for people who are on PC, you, you you mentioned Mac in the air. It's not uh, in the old days. I think you called it an emulator. So you'd you'd mm-hmm. run the sort of emulation software on your PC, and it thought it was a Mac for a bit, so you could run Mac software. So Mac in the air is one step beyond that, isn't it? You don't install anything. Right. So Mac and Cloud is Mac and um, Cloud, sorry, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a service and it allows you to basically rent time on a Mac that you can use remotely. And so you have an account and you can open it up in your browser or you can open it um you can open it using like the win I don't even know the right name. It's I don't have a PC. Window, um, the window. like a Windows, okay. there's like a Windows, you know, virtual desktop that you can open up this Mac on. And then you just use it as if you were using someone else's Mac through another window. And so, you know, it can be it's a little bit of a, a of a of a you know so it can be a little bit confusing because you're using like a computer on your other computer, but like um but for a lot of people, it works out great for them. And we hear we hear from a lot of people that this is how they've chosen to use Vellum. And then we also hear from a lot of people who do that, try it out, and then end up buying a Mac, yes. which <laughs> always wows us, but we're we're fans. So yeah. yes, Apple should produce um the Mac in the Air service, whatever. What's it called? Mac Mac in the Cloud. Mac in Cloud. I think yeah. They produce that free of charge like a drug dealer. Yeah. They'll, they'll they should. It. Yeah. <laughs> they really um, should. Okay, let's talk about the product itself then. So Vellum's purpose is to take your your manuscript, typically that you may have exported from Scrivener or or even written in Word, be exported into mm-hmm. Word. Um, typically, that's how I use it. And then you bring it into Vellum. So that, why don't you talk us through your initial aim for it and what it does today, it sort of features. Uh, so yeah, our initial aim when we started was to do um, was to do that with for people to write in whatever you know word processing software they they want to write their book in. It can be we love Scrivener. We think Scrivener is fantastic. Write it in Scrivener. Scrivener has a Vellum export that makes it even even easier. But you can also use Word or Pages. Export to a docx file and bring it into Vellum, and Vellum will analyze the. Um, the content and try to divvy it up into chapters. It allows you to add front matter, back matter, makes it really easy to do that, we hope. And then initially, um, it was really just all about generating uh, e- ebook formats for the variety of online retailers. So it generates a Apple version, it generates a Kindle version, it generates, you know, et cetera, Kobo, Google Play, et cetera. And then about five years ago, we added the um, ability to generate a print edition as well so um uh so you can create you know pdf print interiors that'll be accepted uh you know at all the major print on demand services like amazon kdp ingram spark um and then sort of this whole thing that i left out is once you get it into vellum and it's it's you know divvied up into chapters you've added your front and back matter sort of that fun thing that I think you were talking about earlier is Vellum has these, um, has dozens of styles that you can then apply that we've labored over and we think are, are, are fun, you know, and beautiful. Um, and, uh, and so you can apply, you can choose the one that speaks to you. You can dig into those options and customize it a bunch. Um, recently we've spent a lot of time on the print side of things. So you can really make your, print edition sing with um, full bleed images, with heading backgrounds that can go um, sort of behind the first page of a chapter, um, behind the text of the first page of a chapter. Um, so yeah, so Vellum is really sort of your last stop before you generate all of the final files that you then would use to self-publish your book online. Yeah. And uh, I'll mention again that it's um, it's a very pleasurable bit of software to use, very easy to use, importing Word, and uh, even does clever things that works out where your chapters are, as long as you've used something relatively recognizable to divide yourself up. And yeah. and even, I have to say, even creating box sets, which I did think, you know, where do I start to create a box set? But actually, you literally just drag and drop your three novels into one, and that could yeah. not be easier either. So you've... you've uh, and the other things I would I'll just mention I find very useful is is having uh, the same page twice in it that will get exported for print. So you might have an ISBN for print and ISBN for ebook, 
And even if you don't have those two, there may be subtle, subtle differences in your back and front matter. And you can actually mark pages for print only for ebook. And then you just have this one vellum file, you export it, and it appears in all its subfolders magically with only that yeah. correct page for ebook. I think that was only a couple of years ago you added that, or maybe a, a little bit longer, but that was a really useful thing, I think. Yeah, um, actually, I, um, I'm trying to remember when we added that. I think it was actually a, a little bit ago where we okay. added the ability to, yeah, to mark elements um, as, yeah, print only or ebooks only. Um, more recently, we've added uh, the ability to mark sections of text. Maybe this is um, ebook only or print only. So if you have a sort of a call to action at the end of your ebook that doesn't really make sense um, in print, you're not going to say click here, right? Yeah. <laughs> if someone's fl flipping through their paperback book, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure nothing's happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, but so maybe you want that block of text at the very end of your last chapter to have sort of a call to action. We added a way to say, hey, this block of text should only be, should be an ebook only, not in print. So that's something that happened um, a little bit more recently, a few years ago already. And can, still, when you uh, you export it, exports to the different uh, formats which you can select or or, or deselect. Um, can you mark? So, for instance, a web link. Can you mark that specifically for Apple? Or mark a, have a version for for Kindle, sort of. So um, web links, the way sort of in the vellum vernacular, web links are specific to um, uh, links to to a page on the internet that that isn't store specific. So you know, if you were just like, hey, look at this YouTube clip, that you would want that to be in all of your books. Um, but there's something we call a store link, which is which is like a web link. It's a stand, but it's a, a store link allows you to say, hey, for the Apple version of this book, you want to go to the Apple store. For the Amazon version, you know, if you want to buy the Kindle version of this book, you're going to go to the Amazon store. So that store link allows you to specify uh, for each format that Vellum generates what store it should point to. And, you know, that's super handy. Um, uh, because you know Apple doesn't want your ebook to include links to Amazon for no. In fact, they will reasons. they will reject it, and so will draft the digits and the aggregators yeah. if you if you accidentally mm -hmm. do, which I did this week. So I know oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I know that they do pay attention to that. Um, yeah. Okay. So the uh, the changes we've seen recently have been that sort of customization, and I think the only the only reason I still find, and I probably you'll tell me a way around this, I still find I need two Ellen files is for the hardback version. Of my novel because I have a separate ISDN, ISDN, ISBN, yeah. ISBN. That's a different thing, ISDN. Yeah. I have a separate ISBN for hardback, paperback, and Kindle edition. And I, right. I my workaround was to have a duplicate vellum file for that. But is there a way around that? Um. Well, sort of. So that's a thing that you know is on our on our long list of possible enhancements is to make it easy to specify, you know, even within print, perhaps to say, hey, this is this is something for hardback, this is something for paperback. Um, until then, if you have significant changes between versions like that, the best way is to do as you did, which is to use a separate vellum file. It's not it's not amazing workaround. We totally understand. Um, for something though like ISBN, what we recommend um, and I think there's an example of this on our on our help page too that I can point you to um, after. Uh, most copyright pages just sort of list the ISBN and then after it indicate the version. So you can have you could actually just have a single copyright page that goes into your ebook and both print editions, and it will just have one ISBN ebook. The, you know, list the other ISBN paperback, the other ISBN hardback gotcha. or hardcover and that's sort of like an accepted way in the publishing industry to just list all the isbns for a particular version so if that was your only change to your hardback version um i would say it's not worth having a separate vellum file but uh we have a lot of we we hear a lot of people are making special editions say using some of the new features that we've added to vellum where you have lots of different images or you have you have sort of vastly different content um and that really kind of at that time that feels a little bit like a separate vellum file because you've got all of these images and you want to you know it's a you, you maybe you have more elements you know a different you know an author's note about the special edition and other stuff like this and um or author commentary or things like that so in that case we recommend creating another vellum file for that 
Yeah, actually, the multiple ISBN um, uh, is a is a, a perfect solution, which I shall get on to. Um, okay, in terms of uh, enhancements and changes, then you you have what sort of contact do you have with with users with authors? You have a regular personal contact with them. You get a feel for what people are after. Uh, yeah. So um, there's only two of us at the company. So we answer every single email that comes in, um, and. Uh, so I think in that way, we, we understand like, oh, you know, this is coming up a lot. What can we do to address that? So, so that's not always the best way to get, you know, because if there are happy people who aren't writing us, but they still have some suggestions, those people tend not to um, reach out to us as often. So we sometimes can, that can be a little bit biased because you're getting a lot of help me with this kind of thing, yeah. not like I want to do this in a better way. So we do go to a lot of conferences. You mentioned we we met at Nank a while ago. Um, so we we try to get out to all these to you know two to five. It's been a little bit weird the last few years, but um, conferences a year, and we'll um, and really touch base. We have um, we like to meet with Vellum users there and see what people are doing. Um, and then you know there's certain user groups that we check in on or that we hear from um, online to to really keep abreast of. Uh, what people want and what's going on um, with our users. So you mean, people should feel free to write us yeah. to, using our contact page and you'll, you'll know that we'll see it. So like, that's another way, like, don't hesitate, please write us. We love to hear from people. And then a reflection of the convenience of using Vellum, you just have to say dear Brad at the top because you know that yeah. one of the two Brads is going to answer. Uh, that does seem amazing to me. There is just the two of you still in the company. You must have undenied over the years about taking on a team. Yeah, we, I mean, we have, and, and there's this, there's a, there's a trade-off. Um, we've, we've both worked on bigger software teams and uh, there's definitely a trade-off. Um, we, you know, we like the personal experience we have with, you know, with our users and hearing all the feedback. Um, not that it couldn't be done to, to grow the team, uh, but at the same time, we feel like we're able to make changes fast. We know, we know Vellum really, really well, and we feel like we've been in it a long, long time. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a constant debate. We just have never quite gotten there yet. We, mm -hmm. we may bring on, you know, a few more people. I, we're never, you know, our goal is not to become the next you know, Microsoft, obviously. Yeah. But. yeah. So, um, but customer service, for instance, I mean, you, you at some point would like to go on vacation. Do you have to separate your <laughs> vacations or do you not, do you, do you not get like a hundred a day that you need to do it? <laughs> we, um, we try to separate our, separate our vacations we, we actually haven't been that good at that lately. Um, so there have been times when we've just, um, will sort of divvy it up on our vacation. You know, Brad will take a couple days and then I'll take a couple days. Um, you know, we're pretty good at it. They, like, you know, like we know sort of people tend to write about similar things. So it doesn't take us that long. It's mostly, you know, we can, we get up early in the morning and can knock it out pretty quick. Um, but yeah, I think bringing someone on to as support would be a good thing. Um, but like I said, there's, all, we, you know, we, to some extent, we'd miss that, that, you know, knowing what's going on, keeping our finger on the pulse, as you said. Yeah, it's obviously an important factor in the company. But by the way, you're not allowed to go on vacation to go off. You're not allowed to fly together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We rely on, it's too much invested in that. It's like the royal family, oh, the president, vice president. Um, yeah, and that's, that's amazing to me that's just the two of you, uh, which is obviously a, a great part of it. And in terms of the company's size, um, so normally the metric as I would use is what well, we started with the two of us is now a team of 250. But what metrics can you use to describe to me your user base or something like how you've grown since you started? Our user base has sort of, I think, it has, has grown significantly and I think includes people who would never have thought about self-publishing maybe in the past. Like, I think our goal was to try to make this like very, very easy. And so the, with the more stuff we've, we've added, I think um, really the bar we, the barrier for entry is lower. So I think we see um, a lot of people like, I had a friend of mine who was like, I wrote this book and now I don't know what to do with it. And she like, didn't even know, mm -hmm. like she was like a friend of a friend. And I was like, well, let me tell you. And and suddenly she's got, you know, suddenly she's like 
finalizing her book and we'll get it published. And what was like sort of this like solitary thing and then maybe would have like, in, you know, years ago been sort of cast aside is now she can put it out there, give people a chance to read it. Um, and that's really, that's really exciting for her. And so I think that that's what we've seen. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, so you are, you are growing. I think we can say without, uh, without shadow of yeah. a doubt. Um, yeah. I mean, there is something about, I think that, that particular process, we, we know we authors, we write our books, we're full of self doubt about them. Think they're horrible. Think they're good. Think they're horrible. You know, go through that. But when you, you take that and export it in Venom for the first time, that for me is the modern equivalent of, of the publisher sending you a book you hold in your hand. I know people still like that. And I've got a book behind me there. Yeah. But honestly, looking at that, that particularly the print export, the PDF, looking at that, suddenly all that stuff you've been doing haphazardly and, and wringing your hands over for six months, a year, 10 years, looks like a professional book. It suddenly looks like a book. That visualization of a novel, I think it's a really important moment in the process. I agree. And to be honest, I don't know that I realize that you know, 10 years ago when we started, you know, when we started, it was like, let's just make this easier, you know, um, you know, this, it seems hard and, and, you know, uh, and, but this friend of mine, when she brought her manuscript in and to Vellum, she didn't even have to print it out. She saw it in the preview pane. She saw it sort of formatted and it looked like a book, like what yeah. she expected a book. And like, I could, you know, she did like, you could tell that that was, really important and it's not something that i personally ex you know would have expected 10 years ago but now it's a thing that i hear from a lot of people and it's wonderful it's great to hear that do you either you or brad write books no so how yeah. how did you come up with the idea i mean why um, why did you enter this particular field so we, um brad and i worked together a long time before this we knew we wanted to start um a small company and that was sort of creating software for creative professionals and we didn't we didn't have a, a solid idea of what we were going to work on we had a bunch of different ideas and actually brad's wife was reading a lot of independent authors on our kindle and the books were sort of had a lot of errors in them had a lot of formatting mistakes and then she started reading about these blogs as well like following the authors on their blogs and they were complaining about the process of making these books and and um and Brad was like, this is a thing that like we'd actually probably be good at because, uh, you know, all that whole the whole technology stack to be nerdy about it. Like, that's something that we we knew we could do. Um, we had experience writing, you know, um, writing animation software for animators at Pixar. We knew we could write, you know, books for creative, you know, creative people to or we could write an application for creative people to use. Um, and we're both avid readers um, and we both really like design. And so, so it just seemed sort of like it ticked all the boxes. And, and uh, actually I was, ooh, um, Brad sort of whipped up a really early, early quick prototype of like what this might be. And we're like, yeah, we think this might work. Who knows? Let's try it. So yeah. that's what happened. And it did work. And funnily enough, I think the formatting errors I see more often are in traditionally published books now on the Kindle. I think it's. Mm -hmm. I think for some traditional publishers, I'm certain, and maybe this is a couple of years ago, it was a, seemed to be a little bit of an afterthought getting the ebook together. Was you probably because of you guys, the indie sector has got that bit right. Yeah, I agree. Um, ebooks, ebooks for you know. Um, for better or for worse, we started with eBooks and added print later. You know, when we started, it was, there were all these articles, you know, are print books dead? And we never thought print books were going to die, but we were like, oh, eBooks are, you know, on a tear. And so we're print, we're, you know, we started with eBooks. And so we always have that focus. I mean, you're, I think you're right. Traditionally published books, they don't, they often, it's totally an afterthought. And so, and they try to force their print sort of ideas onto the ebook land and sometimes that works but sometimes it just doesn't and yeah. so for us both of these things are sort of first class citizens in our in our app and we um whenever we write a feature we think how's it going to look in ebook and how's it going to look in print yeah that definitely feels that way um so just very nerdy and i might not even understand the answer but what do you write the software in 
Oh, <laughs> so um, we when we started, we wrote mostly in Objective C, which is sort of you know basically what most programs ten years ago on the Mac were written in. Since then, we've um, started uh, adding in a little bit of Swift, which is sort of their next generation sort of programming language that Apple has been promoting for the last five or so years. So it's a combination of Objective C, Swift with a few other programming languages here and there that probably not worth mentioning. Okay. I've heard of I've heard of Objective C, so but I haven't heard of Swift. I'm bit, I was yeah. a computer programmer a long time ago, uh -huh. but in the days of COBOL. So uh yeah. that, that's how old I am. Yeah. Swift is fun in that and it's not probably necessarily for your your audience, but Swift is fun in that it's like, you know, Apple's making a um a drive to make it sort of be uh, a little bit more accessible to a lot of people. So it's it's um it's actually, you know, if you're if you're interested in playing around with programming languages, Swift is a Swift is a good one to dip your toe into. Yeah, that sounds sensible. It's not always the Apple way to make everything accessible to a wider audience, but um, no. that's uh But yeah. Yeah, they've open sourced it. Okay. It's it's pretty it's fun. Good. Okay. Well look, um we better tell people where they can find the software and no. uh and how much it costs. Uh so you can find it uh at vellum.pub um and you can download it. Vellum is actually you can download it and play with it, use it to format your book, see what it's going to look like in the preview pane, and you only need to purchase a license when you want to generate those final files we were talking about. Um so you know, it's a thing that both Brad and I felt really strongly about is you know we want people to try this out, um, see if it works for them. We think it's going to work for you, but we don't want to make those assumptions. And we know that like spending money, like especially these days, it's it's a it's a big effort. So um, play with it, see if it works um, for you. Once you decide that you love how your books looks and and you want to publish, you'll need to purchase a license. And we offer two licenses. One is Vellum eBooks, which only allows you to generate eBooks, um, and that's um, one ninety nine, ninety nine, in U.S. dollars, and then um, and then a Vellum Press license allows you to generate eBooks as well as um, PDF print interiors, um, and that's two forty nine, ninety nine. And once you that once you own a license, you own the license. It's good forever, and there's no limit to how many books you can generate, et cetera. Yeah. Did you think about a subscription model? At some point, I'm sure you must have done at some point. Yeah, we did. Um, you know, back then, both Brad and I, when we first started, you know, this, we we really felt like you should own the software um, that you have, and to some extent, we still feel that way. Though the world, the world has sort of um, has has moved away from that. And I have to say that I've softened a little bit. It doesn't bother me to subscribe to. Um, to you know to services that i that i love and use all the time so it's a thing we've talked about but for now it's like you own it you've got it you don't have to think about it it's not a recurring charge um so so yeah you but uh, we've often yeah. think we often toss about ideas about way to change things up yeah and i think scrivener is the same isn't it? i think you you you, you buy that i don't think they've got any plans so it's it's you know, yeah as authors it's uh well anyway i can tell you i'm a fanboy of vellum oh, and good. i don't begrudge the money i spent on it uh, for one <laughs> second i use it for myself and for fuse um uh, so yes yeah so it's, it's great it's a great pleasure talking to you brad and um yeah keep up the good work how often do you go in and tinker with it how often do you make changes because it doesn't it feels such a stable platform I mean, we change it every day. Really, um, that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> but like, but you know, we 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 change it. We're often, you know, tinkering with it, as you say. And but you know, we'll we only do releases every, you know, so small, minor releases that were really well, you know, that that are sort of maybe bug fix releases every once a month or so. Um, and then our larger changes, which we we release, I don't know, quarterly, say. Um, uh, we you know we really test the heck out of it because you know we we know how stressful it can be you're you're putting the finishing touches on a book and you hit an issue we hate that when we encounter that in other software we we don't want to be that way so yeah and um, i guess the other bane of your life is the operation system changes 
you have to yeah. do a load of testing without. And I have to say, they don't always come out. Well, I guess they're huge to thoroughly test, but they don't always come out perfect, do they? Or when, no. When they... Yeah, that's a big that's a big amount of work for us. Every year, Apple releases a very big update, and so that can take. Um, sometimes we get lucky, and it can take a little bit of testing, and sometimes it can take weeks and weeks of work and testing, and that's, you know you got to yeah. deal with it so it's yeah. just a cost but good okay well look the pc users have either switched off or they're googling <laughs> uh mac in the mac in cloud mac in cloud <laughs> in their name uh, or they're looking at, at mini max now because i think uh it's a great bit of software as you know thank you so much indeed brad if people want to meet either you or other brad um yeah. in person where are you going to be this year uh, we're going to be at Nink. I think that's probably the best way to see us. So come to Florida, um, St. Pete's, and uh, yeah, please say hi. And thank you so much uh, for having us on your show, or me on your show. Hey, you're very welcome. Well, um, well, well I'll see you in Nink again and um, yeah. and uh, buy you a beer this time and say thank you in person. But yeah, brilliant work. Can't wait. Thank you so much, Brad. Thank you. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. There you go. I think it's fair to say we're both big fans of Vellum, right, Mark? Yeah, I was saying to you off camera, we, I've been using it today. Actually, I just finished a, a new Milton book yesterday, and so today I formatted it, and it's just, I don't know, I, I love Vellum. I remember back in the day before Vellum, BV, if you like, I, I'd send it, send the manuscript off to um, my formatter, a guy in Australia that I used, and he would maybe two days later send it back to me as a formatted EPUB and Mobi file. Um, but then if I wanted to change anything, which happened, you know, I have to send it back to him, ask him, you know, this section here, please change this to this. And it was just really, really faffy. Um, but now, you know, it's just, it takes seconds. It's just, you know, it's, Vellum is so good to use. Now, we should say there are other alternatives. Vellum is, is not the cheapest of the alternatives that you could choose. Um, and there are some free ones that are pretty good. Um, the, the Readsy editor is is recommended. A uh, Atticus, Dave Chesson's new formatting software. Again, I see lots of people in the community who like that. But for me, per just speaking personally, um, I I can't really imagine not using Vellum now. It's 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 a very important part of my process, and I'm you know the, the two of them have done a fantastic job. Yeah, I mean Draft Edition and others all all have uh, formatting yeah. uh, options for you, and, and lots of people um, will use them. And, and even Scrivener, you can you can format in Scrivener. Um, Atticus, oh. I su Atticus, I suppose, uh, is a, a slightly different ballpark, and we could probably catch up with Dave actually about Atticus. Mm. So I think maybe we we had, we we're going to record an episode of the show live in in Nink in Florida. I think maybe Dave could be a candidate for a yeah, live guest because absolutely. I'd like to mm. catch up with Atticus and its progress. But um, the Atticus thing is is more than just formatting, isn't it? It's about it's about a kind of um, uh, a process, a project management process where you're all in one one organization and i think that's is is why people are liking it so much okay uh, anyway thank you very much brad and for coming on and we will see you in nink i'll share a beer with you hopefully because i think the brads are both going to uh, to nink as well so we'll catch up with them there right marcus i think that is it from us for this week thank you very much indeed uh thank you again for sponsoring me in my half marathon run and uh if you want to see Mark Sweaty, what is it again? P-Back Writer on Peloton? P-Back Writer, yes, exactly. And there is actually a, uh, or a hashtag. There's hashtag Team SPF as well. Oh, right. So hashtag Team SPF. Um, it's John in there because John has a Peloton. I don't think he is, no. Does, he has oh. one. Does he, does he use it? Well, I'm, I don't know. He has one. <laughs> I think he did use it when he first got it. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll look into Peloton. And I have a Watt bike, which I really like, but I would happily swap to Peloton. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in, yeah. in the road bike community, Watt bike is a bit more for road yeah. bike you know, yeah. to, to really work on cycling, whereas Peloton's a bit more of a fitness thing. But in the winter, you kind of need a bit of fitness stuff. Yeah. Okay. Enough of our fitness obsessions. I so expect if, if, to you, see... if you want to buy a Peloton, go to subpoena.com <laughs> forward slash uh, Peloton <laughs> and, and, and we'll, we'll get 50% on. No, 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 we no, no affiliate deals with Peloton, I, but I recommend it without hesitation. Very good. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you again to the team in the background led by John um, and uh, for getting this on air and appreciate it. We'll speak to you, I guess, this time next week. Thank you very much indeed. All that remains for me to say is it's a goodbye from him. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get show notes 
the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash selfpublishingshow. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing, so get your words into the world and join the revolution with The Self-Publishing Show. <laughs>